section 175 the gandharva continued saying this tapati of faultless features ascended the skies the monarch thereupon again fell down on the earth his ministers and followers searching for him throughout the forest at length came upon him lying on that solitary spot and beholding that excellent king that mighty bowman thus lying forsaken on the ground like a rainbow dropped from the firmament his minister in chief became like one burned by a flame of fire advancing hastily with affection and respect the minister rise at that best of monarchs lying prostrate on the ground and deprived of his senses by desire world in wisdom as in age world in achievements as in policy the minister after having raised the prostrate monarch became easy in mind addressing the king in sweet words that were also for his good he said less be thou o sinless one fear not o tiger among kings the minister thought that the monarch a great feller of hostile ranks in battle had been lying on the ground overcome with hunger thirst and fatigue the whole man then sprinkled over the crownless head of the monarch water that was cold and rendered fragrant with the lotus petals slowly regaining his consciousness the mighty monarch sent away all his attendants with the exception of his minister only after those attendants had retired at his command the king sat upon the mountain breast having purified himself duly the king sat upon the chief of mountains and began with joined hands and hand of turned face to worship surya king samvarana that smiter of all foes thought also of his chief priest vasista that best of rishis the king continued to sit there day and night without intermission the brahmana said vasista came there on the 12th day the great rishis of saul under perfect command knew what is at once by his ascetic power that the monarch had lost his senses in consequence of tapati and that virtuous and best of munis as soon as he knew this desirous of benefiting the monarch who was ever observant of vows addressed him and gave him every assurance the illustrious rishis in the very sight of that monarch ascended upward to interview surya himself possessed of the splendor of that luminary a brahmana then approached with joined hands the god of a thousand rays and introduced himself cheerfully unto him saying i am vasista then vivasvat of great energy said unto that best of rishis welcome heart thou o great rishi tell me what is in thy mind o thou of great good fortune whatever thou demand of me o foremost of eloquent men i will confer on thee however difficult it may be for me thus addressed by surya a rishi of great ascetic merit going on to the god of light replied saying o vibhavasu this thy daughter tapati the hanger sister of savitri i ask of thee for samvarana that monarch is of mighty achievements conversant with virtue and of i saul O firmament ranger, Samvarana will make a worthy husband for thy daughter. Thus addressed by the Rishi, Vibhakara resolved upon bestowing his daughter upon Samvarana, saluted the Rishi <coughs> and replied unto him, saying, O Samvarana is the best of monarchs, thou art the best of Rishis, Tapati is the best of women. What should we do, therefore? but bestow her on samvarna saying this the god tapana made over his daughter tapati of every feature perfectly faultless unto the illustrious vasista to bestow her upon samvarna and the great rishi 
then accepted the girl tapati and taking leave of surya came back to the spot where that bull amongst the kurus of celestial achievements was king samvarana possessed by kama and with his heart fixed on tapati beholding that celestial maiden of sweet smiles led by vasishta became exceedingly glad and tapati of fair hegros came down from the, from the firmament like lightning from the clouds dazzling the ten points of the heavens and the illustrious rishi vasishta of pure soul approached the monarch after the later 12 nights war was over it was thus that king samvarana obtained a wife after having worshiped with ascetic penances the propitious lord vishwavasvat by the help of vasishta's ascetic power and samvarana that bull among men with the due rites took tapati's hands and horn that mountain breast which was resorted to by the celestials and the gandharvas the royal sage with the permission of vasishta desired to sport with his wife on that mountain and the king caused vasishta to be proclaimed his regent in his capital and kingdom in the woods and gardens and bidding farewell hand to the monarch vasishta left him and went away samvarana who sported on that mountain like a celestial sported with his wife in the woods and the underwoods on that mountain for 12 full years and who best of the bharatas the god of a thousand eyes poured no rain for 12 years on the capital and on the kingdom of that monarch then o chastiser of enemies when that season of drought broken out that the people of that kingdom as also the trees and lower animals began to die fast and during the continuance of that dreadful drought not even a drop drop of dew fell from the skies and no corn grew and the inhabitants in despair and afflicted with the fear of hunger left their homes and fled away in all directions and the famished people of the capital and the country began to abandon their wives and children and grew reckless of one another the people being afflicted with hunger without a morsel of food and reduced to skeletons the capital looked very much like the city of the king of the dead full of only ghostly beings and beholding the capital reduced to such a state the illustrious and virtuous and best of rishis vashishta was resolved upon applying remedy and brought back unto the city that tiger among kings samvarana along with his wife after the latter had passed so long a period in solitude and seclusion after the king had entered his capital things became as before for when that tiger among kings came back to his own the god of a thousand eyes the slayer of asuras poured rain in abundance and caused corn to grow revived by the foremost of virtuous soul the capital and the country became became animated with extreme joy the monarch with his wife tapati once more performed sacrifices to offer 12 years like the lord indra god of rain performing sacrifices with his wife sachi gandharva continued this o partha is the history of tapati of old the daughter of vivaswat it is for her that thou art called tapatya king samvarana begot upon tapatya a son named kuru who was the foremost of ascetics born in the race of kuru thou art o arjuna to be called tapatya thus ends the 175th section in the chaitra ratha parva of the adi parva